Number 10, The London Hammer. Max Hahn and his wife Emma went out on a stroll in June 1936, or 1934 according to other stories, when they came across a rock that had wood sticking out of its center. They made the choice to bring the anomaly home and subsequently used a hammer and chisel to open it. Ironically, what they discovered inside resembled a vintage hammer. A group of archaeologists examined it when they were given it, and it was discovered that the rock encasing the hammer was dated to the Ordovician, which is more than 400 million years old. There are some doubts about that date but here's the really shocking part. Early measurements revealed that the hammer itself was more than 500 million years old. It appears to be so old that a portion of the handle has started to turn into coal. Of course, creationists were all over this, and in the 1980s, creationist Carl Bogg grabbed hold of the idea and even used it as the foundation for his theory of how the atmosphere on pre-flood Earth would have favored the emergence of giants. However, the puzzles don't end there. The hammer's head, which is more than 96% iron, is far purer than anything that nature could have produced on her own without the aid of technology, and it has a design that is reminiscent of an American hammer from the 19th century. Number 9, the Antikythera Mechanism. When you consider the age of the antique computer, which is now on display at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, the level of craftsmanship is just astounding. The earliest mechanical computer has been dubbed the Antikythera Mechanism. It was created to compute astronomical positions and was discovered in a shipwreck 45 meters under the surface off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. It is about as sophisticated as a top-notch clock from the 18th century, even though it is 21 100 years old. It consists of a box with dials on the exterior and a very intricate assembly of gear wheels installed inside. Scientists have been forced to acknowledge that their preconceived notions about ancient Greek engineering may be incorrect due to the device's level of sophistication. Nothing like this exists, and none of the known texts from the time it was created make any references to it. The knowledge we do possess suggests that this mechanism shouldn't even exist. Number 8, the Dropa Stones. In 1938, an expedition to the Bayan Kara Ula in China under the direction of archaeologist Dr. Chi Pu Te reported finding a startling discovery. Hundreds of stone discs were strewn over the inside of the cave, covered in thick layers of dust. At first glance, the discs didn't appear to be anything special, but upon closer inspection, they were startlingly similar to phonograph records. They were 9 inches in diameter, had circles cut out of the centers of them, and had a clear spiral groove. It is thought that they date back more than 10,000 years. It turns out that the spiral is made up of microscopic hieroglyphs. The disc's astounding tale of spacecraft commanded by people going by the name of the Dropa colliding with the mountains was revealed after being investigated and translated. Number 7, the Saqqara Bird. The Saqqara Bird is an artifact in the shape of a bird fashioned from sycamore wood. It was found during the 1898 excavation of the Padi Iman tomb in Saqqara, Egypt. It has a wingspan of more than 7 inches, weighs just under 40 grams, and is thought to have existed around 200 BC or 2200 years ago. The issue is that someone was being lazy when the bird was originally discovered. Lack of evidence on the bird's precise location and discovery has given rise to some conjecture about about its purpose. Could it be a glider or possibly an image of a flying machine? Number 6, the Baghdad Battery. This contraption consists of a 5.5 inch high clay pot with a copper cylinder within that is secured by asphalt. Archaeologists discovered an oxidized iron rod inside the cylinder. Wilhelm Koenig, a German who served as the National Museum of Iraq's director, proposed that these might be galvanic cells that were possibly used to electroplate gold into silver artifacts around 1940. Nobody has been able to disprove him, especially considering that an electric charge might be generated by just filling the device with an acidic or alkaline liquid. Even if it had been able to function, the Baghdad battery wouldn't have been very efficient as a battery. In actuality, the majority of archaeologists think the device might merely be a storage container and not a battery. Number 5, Unexplainable Fossils Geology is a somewhat new discipline in science. Experimentation has led to incredible advancements and breakthroughs that have benefited numerous other fields. There are still certain things that need to be discussed. Even though the honeycomb design of Paleodictian is well recognized, we are still baffled as to how it was made. 
and further inquiries are being made now. Examples include the finding of a fossilized human finger in limestone that is thought to be more than 110 million years old, a fossilized human handprint in limestone that is more than 300 million years old, and the apparent discovery of a human footprint that may have worn a sandal. The scientific community is puzzled by these extraordinary fossilized imprints and remains. Number 4. The Piri Reis Map The finding of this writing on a gazelle skin by a group of historians in 1929 is nothing short of remarkable. After careful examination and investigation, they discovered that the map was actually created in 1513 by the well-known Turkish admiral Piri Reis. Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, a number of islands including the fabled islands of Antilia and Azores, and the Azores, Japan, and even Antarctica, which was assumed to have been discovered more than 300 years later, were all shown by Reyes. The most perplexing aspect is not that it suggests that the chronology for a lot of exploratory finds needs to be re-examined, but rather that it describes Antarctica's landscape in great detail and without ice cover, even though the last time that happened was more than 6,000 years ago. Number 3. The Nazca Lines There is undoubtedly something strange about the Nazca drawings or Nazca Lines. They were found in 1930 when the US opened two new commercial lines, and some of them are longer than 200 meters. They encompass 450 square kilometers. They show lines, geometrical shapes, animals, and shapes that we still don't fully understand. Many think they are constellations. It is apparent that they were intended to be seen from the sky, whether they were erected for the gods or for any other purpose. Scientists have struggled to explain how they might have conceived and produced these without someone supervising the process from above. Number 2. The City of Nan Madol between 200 BC and 800 AD, the city of Nan Madol was constructed on a coral reef close to Micronesia. It was made up of roughly 100 man-made islands connected by viaducts and constructed from enormous basalt rocks. It mesmerizes us right away with a blend of the odd and the opulent. 250 million tons of offshore basalt in the middle of nowhere feels out of place right away. How are these massive blocks mined, moved, and placed in the ideal location? Even by today's engineering standards, it would be a remarkable achievement. Furthermore, the motivation for its creation is still a mystery. Few hints as to what transpired to the culture that gave rise to it are known to archaeologists. Number 1. The Saxe Huaman Walls These remarkable walls first captured the attention of the Spanish conquistadors near the city of Cusco, which is located more than 3,500 meters above sea level. They were shocked to learn that these marvels had been constructed by individuals who, in their opinion, lacked intelligence and the capacity for rational thought. They are actually three concentric walls that are composed of 300 ton limestones and have an average length and height of about 360 meters apiece. The walls were constructed without the use of mortar or any other type of cement, yet they were carved and arranged so tightly together that not even a sharp knife could fit in between the two blocks. Scientists have made attempts to accomplish this on a much smaller scale, but they have been unsuccessful in duplicating the precise joints of the Saxe Huaman walls. Number 10. Giant Orange Creature Scientists in Ecuador were scanning the Amazon rainforest when they came upon an orange creature with eight legs and fangs. According to a study published on July 6th in the journal Ecology and Evolution, the creature is a new species and the first of its genus to be discovered in the nation. It is a form of giant crab spider. The unique spider was discovered by researchers from the University of San Francisco in Quito in the Yasun Biosphere Reserve, an area of protected rainforest in the northeast of the nation. It is regarded as one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth. Number 9. Kaititu Munde In the depths of Brazil's Amazon rainforest, a big pig-like creature that was previously unknown to scientists has been found. The animal, which can reach lengths of more than 4 feet and weighs about twice as much as other pecaries, has earned the moniker Giant until Mark van Roosmalen, a Dutch primatologist, became aware of the skins and bones of the animals, ended by local hunters, the huge peccary, remained entirely unknown to contemporary man. Four of the animals were photographed by van Roosmalen. The name Great Peccary, which lives in pairs, or Kaititu Monde, given to the animal by the Tupi natives, means means great peccary in 2P. 
Number eight, spectacled bear. One of the forest's most striking residents is the spectacled bear. This bear, despite its size, has a sweet and individual personality that makes it truly remarkable. The spectacled bear is not a small bear, measuring five to six feet long and rising impressively to a height of three to three and a half feet at the shoulder. Its amazing weight ranges from 220 to 440 pounds. The adaptability of this bear, which lives in the tough Amazon environment, definitely stands out. It climbs trees with ease to find yummy delicacies like fruits, nuts, and honey because of its powerful front limbs and pointed claws. The unusual marks around the eyes that resemble a pair of spectacles are immediately noticeable on this bear. Number seven, Jaguar. The Amazon jungle is home to the largest big cat in the Americas, the jaguar. Without the tail, it ranges in length from 3.9 to 6.2 feet. Additionally, it has a shoulder height of 2.3 feet. Males normally weigh between 123 and 211 pounds, and girls range from 79 to 141 pounds in weight. The jaguar seamlessly blends into the rainforest's light and shadows thanks to its muscular form and striking rosette-like markings. The jaguar, which has a strong bite, may crush the skulls of peccaries, caimans, and capybaras. Its superior hearing and vision, as well as its agility and swimming proficiency, improve its capacity for hunting. Number 6, Amazonian Manatee. Introducing one of the ultimate aquatic heavyweights, the Amazonian Manatee. These amazing creatures come in very amazing sizes. They can extend to lengths of between 8 and 10 feet, and some of them even surpass the astounding 13 feet. They can weigh in at a massive 800 to 1300 pounds, making them truly aquatic giants. These beautiful animals glide through the streams of the Amazon with ease, their sleek bodies decorated with paddle-like flippers and a horizontally flattened tail. They are herbivores and have a voracious appetite for aquatic vegetation, consuming up to 8% of their own body weight per day. Number 5, Harpy Eagle. The wings of this bird can open out to a mass of 6.5 feet. The harpy eagle is no laughing matter, as it stands between 3 and 3.5 three and feet tall. It is one of the biggest and most powerful raptors there is, and believe me when I say that, its size and gorgeous look will wow you. This is where things really heat up. This eagle has enormous talons that are 5 inches long that corresponds to the size of a grizzly bear's claws. The harpy eagle has incredible grip and power thanks to their magnificent talons. It can easily snare prey, and it isn't hesitant to pursue juvenile deer, monkeys, or sloths. That hunter is fierce. Number 4, Stingray. These enormous fish can reach incredible lengths. They can spread out to a whopping 6 to 7 feet, and some can go even much farther than that, over 8 feet. Imagine this magnificent animal effortlessly gliding along the riverbed while vigilantly guarding its own territory. Now hear this, the enormous stingray's wingspan is unlike anything else. It has an amazing 14 foot height potential. Yes, it is one of the largest freshwater fish in existence. This stingray dominates the Amazonian depths due to its enormous size. The problem is that coming across this magnificent species is rather difficult. Its presence serves as a reminder of the incredible variety and enigmatic treasures that are hidden beneath the surface of the mighty Amazon River. Number three, giant armadillo. This creature can only be described in one way, as gigantic. It is between three and four and a half feet long, its hard plates protecting it from damage. The enormous armadillo does not fall short in terms of weight. It is the largest species of armadillo on earth, weighing an impressive 60 to 80 pounds. Let's also discuss the front claws. They are serious. They enable the enormous armadillo to create tunnels with astonishing speed. These tunnels can grow to a staggering 23 feet in length. These burrows serve as habitats for several forest animals, in addition to providing shelter for the armadillo itself. Number two, tapir. These animals are strong and muscular, with shoulders that are roughly 3 feet tall. They can extend to a staggering 6.5 feet in length. They weigh a substantial 550 to 900 pounds, therefore they are also not lightweights. Tapirs can travel throughout their habitat with ease and are skilled at making their presence known. They also have a somewhat distinctive appearance. They have a body that is formed like a barrel with an unusual snout. They can access leaves and graze on vegetation that other herbivores find difficult to reach thanks to what looks like a short trunk. The cool part is right there though. Tapers are the rainforest's gardeners. They eat fruits and then defecate out the seeds whole. This promotes the dispersal of seeds and increases the diversity and size of the rainforest. 
Number one, capybara. The capybara is a fairly cool animal. They stand around 1.5 feet tall and can extend to a length of 3.5 to 4.5 feet. They weigh a substantial 75 to 150 pounds too. They are not delicate beings. Additionally, their large size makes it easy for them to move around on both land and in the water. In relation to the water, capybaras are expert swimmers. They are great swimmers thanks to their webbed feet and slender bodies. Additionally, they spend a lot of time in the water, diving and submerging themselves for extended periods of time. They resemble the monarchs of the aquatic kingdom who aren't fish. Capybaras are very sociable animals. They enjoy hanging out together and can establish groups of up to 20 beings. It appears as though they are a functioning little village. They are safer from predators when they are together and they just appear to enjoy each other's company. They're also the cutest scary animal on this list. Number 10, Pompeii Loot. The ancient Roman city of Pompeii was obliterated in 79 AD when Mount Vesuvius erupted. Many senators and wealthy Romans purchased homes in this city, which was south of Naples, mostly as summer vacations. However, a volcanic explosion on August 24, 79 AD completely covered the city in volcanic ash. The earliest excavations in the area were carried out during the 18th century by the Spanish engineer Roque Joaquin de Alcubier. By the following century, the city had been made accessible to the general public thanks to ongoing excavation operations. Annual allegations of looting are widespread, according to curators, custodians, and other local personnel. In their pursuit of one-of-a-kind or unusual souvenirs, tourists remove artifacts or pieces of monuments from the area, distributing a piece of Pompeii around the globe. The Pompeii Archaeological Superintendents receives roughly 100 shipments per year containing artifacts purportedly stolen from the city, and here is where the mythical curse of Pompeii starts. Most come with notes explaining the misfortune their owners have experienced. Number 9, the Ring of Seneschanus. This Roman ring weighs 12 grams and is inscribed in Latin, Seneschane vivas in Deo. When a researcher was preparing an inventory of the artifacts in his care in 1929, he accidentally discovered some intriguing and sinister details that gave the lost ring new meaning. These details connected the ring to the discoveries of an archaeological dig. The early 1900s saw the completion of these archaeological projects at a location called Lydney, only 80 miles from the site where the ring was discovered. At the location, archaeologists discovered a tablet on which a Roman called Silvianus reported the theft of his ring to Nodens, the Celtic god of healing and hunting. He also prayed to the god to punish the perpetrator because he knew who it was. It was written on the stone, May he who bears the name of Seneschanus not have health until he brings the ring back to the temple of Nodens. Number 8. Books a book might have taken years to produce in the Middle Ages. A scribe would spend hours each day carefully constructing letters by hand while hunched over his copy table in natural light solely because lights posed too great a risk to the volumes. Copying hurts, according to one scribe, it extinguishes the light from the eyes, it bends the back, it crushes the viscera and the ribs, it brings forth pain to the kidneys and weariness to the whole body. Scribes and book proprietors had a great motive to preserve their work given the enormous amount of labor that went into generating books. They implied the one tool they had, language. Scribes and book owners would inscribe dramatic curses that threatened thieves with anguish and misery if they were to steal or harm these priceless works of art at the opening or end of books. The worst penalties they were aware of, excommunication from the church and a torturous, excruciating passing, were used without hesitation. If you steal a book, you might get your hands cut off, be made to give your hands as sacrifices, have your eyes gouged out, or pass away in the fires of hell and brimstone. How lovely. Number 7, The Stolen Amethyst. This amethyst has only brought its owners anguish and destruction since it was stolen out of India during the Rebellion of 1857. The stone, also known as the Cursed Amethyst, or somewhat misleadingly, the Delhi Purple Sapphire, is currently kept in the Natural History Museum's vault in London with other priceless gems including a Martian meteorite and a Medusa emerald. It was not allowed to be taken from the bank safe until three years after the last owner's passing because he had it stashed away 
away in seven different boxes. The amethyst was allegedly taken from the Temple of Indra in Kanpur by a Bengal cavalryman by the name of Colonel W. Ferris, who then transported it to England. However, the malevolent character of the lovely Violet Stone soon became apparent when he practically lost everything he possessed and his health started to decline. He donated the stone to a buddy who later ended himself when his kid who received it experienced the same pain. In a strange turn of events, that buddy had bequeathed the stone to the son who had discovered the amethyst, returning it to him now bearing a toll from its legend. Number 6. The Anguished Man the Anguished Man is a painting created by an unknown artist. Owner Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England, claims to have inherited the painting from his grandmother, who told him that the artist who created the painting had mixed his own blood into the paint and passed away by his own hand soon after finishing the work. The painting had been characterized as being supposedly haunted. Robinson uploaded videos of the painting to his YouTube channel in 2010, in which he claims he has heard crying and moaning noises in his house and to have once seen the figure of a man. Actually, back in 2015, there were rumors floating around that suggested that the painting was being sold to the highest bidder. Although it turned out to be false, who in their right mind would buy this thing? Look at the painting. That thing wouldn't be anywhere near my hands if I could do something about it. Number five, the gold of Tolosa. The gold of Tolosa was never found, but was suspected to have remained in the custody of Sir Vili Capionis, who despite the total impoverishment of their patriarch became immensely wealthy suddenly. Despite this, the heirs of Capio also seemed to suffer from unlucky ends. During the social war, Capio's son, also called Quintus Servilius Capio, was tricked by the Marsic general Quintus Popadius Silo and ambushed, which resulted in the destruction of his army and his own passing. Cap Capio's grandson passed away young from an unnamed illness, while the last heir, Capio's great-grandson, Marcus Junius Brutus, would undertake the assassination of Julius Caesar. The sources make frequent allusions to the gold being cursed. The earliest Strabo says that due to having laid hands on the gold of Tolosa, Capio ended his life in misfortunes, while his near contemporary, Pompeius Trogus, even suggested that the defeat at Arazio was punishment for the theft of the treasure. Number 4, Robert the Doll. According to legend, the doll has <clears throat> The doll has supernatural abilities that allow it to move, change its facial expressions, and make giggling sounds. Some versions of the legend claim that a young girl of Bahamian descent gave Otto the doll as a gift or as retaliation for a wrongdoing. Other stories claim that the doll moved voodoo figurines around the room and was aware of what went on around him. Still, other legends claim that the doll vanished after Otto's house changed ownership a number of times after his passing, or that young Otto triggered the doll's supernatural natural abilities by blaming his childhood mishaps on the doll. According to local folklore, the doll has caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and a cornucopia of other misfortunes. And museum visitors supposedly experience post-visit misfortunes for failing to respect Robert. Number 3. White Lighters There are many myths about smoking and good fortune. Every new pack of cigarettes some individuals purchase has one cigarette turned upside down to make it lucky. Some people think it's unlucky to light three or more cigarettes with the same match, and using a white lighter is also thought to be extremely unfortunate, a superstition that has persisted among smokers of all types despite being, well, quite foolish. Even in modern times, it's not unusual to run into smokers who refuse to buy white lighters and won't even use them to light things that belong to someone else. When one is being used, some individuals don't even like to be there. But how did this myth even begin in the first place? Number two, the dark mirror. This mysterious reflector, which appears to practically take on a life of its own, is housed in the world's only mobile museum of the unexplained. The original owner brought it at a psychic fair in the Columbus vicinity and sold it to the museum. The same owner claims that after looking into the scrying mirror's black reflection, they were overcome with horrifying visions. The museum asserts that visitors have also described unsettling visions, including seeing their own passing when staring into the reflected glass. Number 1. The Hope Diamond There are strong indications that such fabrications serve to heighten the mystery and appeal of the stone because increased publicity typically increases the gem's value 
and newsworthiness. The diamond has long been associated with a mythical curse that is said to bring tragedy and misfortune to anyone who owns or wears it. Many false reports claim that the Hope Diamond's original form was taken from an eye of a statue of the Hindu goddess Sita in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The specific legends about the Hope Diamond's cursed origin were created in the early 20th century to add mystique to the stone and increase its sales appeal as well as increase newspaper sales. However, similar to the curse of Tutankhamun, this general type of legend was most likely the independent creation of Western authors during the Victorian era. Number 10, Helicoprion. The mystery of this bizarre fish starts with a weird fossil and numerous attempts to figure out what it was and how to classify it. Helicoprion puzzled paleontologists and ichthyologists for over a century. The only remains of this fossil up until 2013 were from a fossilized whorl of teeth. While most scientists agreed that the teeth belonged to the lower jaw, that didn't prevent the presumed location of the teeth from migrating around the body in sometimes fanciful arrangements that can be seen in numerous illustrations and reconstructions. With the later discovery of some portions of a jaw, the location of its buzzsaw-like teeth were finally determined to fill the lower jaw. Strangely, there were no upper teeth, so this creature could terrifyingly gum and bite you at the same time. The jaw would close, rotating the teeth backwards, much like a circular saw blade. It probably fed on the soft bodies of squid and other cephalopods, like the kraken. Number 9. Arthropleura this is not something you want to see crawling around the woods when you're out for a hike. Arthropleura was an 8.5 foot long millipede from the Carboniferous era. And though it was herbivorous, likely feeding on detritus like modern millipedes, it still has scare factor. I'm burning the house down if I find this under my sink. Just because it won't try to eat you doesn't prevent it from being creepy while it scuttles about. Fossil trackways have been discovered showing that Arthropleura could move and maneuver quickly, undulating hundreds of legs in rhythm to nauseate and disturb anyone watching. These are the largest known land invertebrates of all time, and it is unlikely that they had any predators, but it could probably rear up into a defensive posture and look you straight in the eyes. I think this thing would just scare the Kraken off. Number 8. Leviathan Malvele this extinct whale was, was named both for the monstrous sea creature Leviathan from the Old Testament that when he rises up the mighty are terrified they retreat before his thrashing and for Herman Melville, the author of the novel Moby Dick, tale of an accursed white whale that terrorizes Captain Ahab and eventually brought about his passing and the destruction of his ship and crew. This is an amazing namesake to live up to. Leviathan Malvele is related to modern sperm whales like Moby Dick and lived during the Miocene epoch. It was 44 to 57 feet long and had a 10 foot long skull that housed 40 14.5 inch long teeth. These are the longest teeth used for feeding known from any animal extinct or alive. They fed on large prey at the surface of the water including other whales. This whale likely became so large because it was competing directly with Megalodon for food. Number 7. Gigantosaurus Gigantosaurus was 43 feet long and larger than the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but only by 3 feet. It had a 5.2 foot long skull with 64 8 inch long compressed and serrated teeth that were made for slicing through flesh, though they were not capable of crushing bone like the teeth of Tyrannosaurus. Gigantosaurus is from the Cretaceous period and lived in what is now Argentina. It was related to the nearly equally sized Carcharodontosaurus from Africa. Evidence suggests the possibility that Gigantosaurus was a pack hunter and that they hunted large sauropods. This would make it the only theropod that actively hunted sauropods. Another interesting feature is that the lower jaw was broadened slightly, allowing it to also handle smaller prey. It's easy to imagine Gigantosaurus chomping down on the flesh of some goofy bipedal mammals if it ever had been given the chance. And it could probably do the same to the Kraken. Number 6. Akamanto Akamanto, Red Cloak, also known as Red Cape, Red Vest, Akai Kami Aoi Kami, Red Paper, Blue Paper, or occasionally Aoi Manto, Blue Cloak, is a Japanese urban legend about a masked spirit who wears a red cloak and who appears to people using toilets in public or school bathrooms. Accounts of the legend vary. 
But one consistent element of the story is that the spirit will ask the occupant of a toilet a question. In some versions, he will ask if they want red paper or blue paper, though other versions identify the choices as a red cloak or a blue cloak, or as a red cape or a blue cape. Choosing either option will result in the individual being removed from life. So the individual must ignore the spirit or reject both options and flee in order to survive. Author and folklorist Matthew Meyer has stated that the Akamanto has been recorded as a schoolyard rumor dating back as early as the 1930s. Number 5. Namazu the legend or myth in Japan is that a gigantic namazu, or catfish, lives inside or beneath the earth, or in the mud, which causes earthquakes. The association of the namazu with earthquakes seems to have first occurred in the area around Lake Biwa, around the 16th century. The namazu had been depicted in the otsue, which were manufactured in the area. This earthquake-causing creature became associated with the deity and foundation stone in Kashima Ibaraki. The god, Takami Kuzu, Zuchi, enshrined at Kashima, restrains the catfish underneath a stone. When the Kashima god lets his guard fall, Namazu thrashes about, causing violent earthquakes. You know what comes with earthquakes? Tsunamis. Boom. Kraken's done. Number 4, Tidalik. In the creation myth, Tidalik awoke one morning with an insatiable thirst and started to drink until he had gulped down all the available fresh water. Creatures and plant life everywhere began to die due to lack of moisture. Other animals conspired against Tidalik and devised a plan for him to release all of the water he had consumed. This was successfully coordinated by a wise old owl when Nabunem, the eel, made Tidalik laugh when he tied himself in comical shapes. As Tidalik laughed, the water rushed out of him to replenish the lakes, swamps, and rivers. But he could probably drink the ocean dry, leading to the Kraken just flopping about. Number 3, the Rainbow Serpent. The Rainbow Serpent, or Rainbow Snake, is a common deity often seen as the Creator God, known by numerous names in different Australian Aboriginal languages by the many different Aboriginal peoples. It is a common motif in the art and religion of many Aboriginal Australian peoples. Much like the archetypal Mother Goddess, the Rainbow Serpent creates land and diversity for the Aboriginal people, but when disturbed can bring great chaos. There are many names and stories associated with the serpent, all of which communicate the significance and power of this being within Aboriginal mythology, which includes the worldview commonly referred to as the dreaming. The serpent is viewed as a giver of life through its association with water, but can be a destructive force if angry. Number two, the Jersey Devil. In South Jersey and Philadelphia folklore in the United States, the Jersey Devil, also known as the Leeds Devil for some reason, is a legendary creature said to inhabit the forests of the Pine Barrens in South Jersey. The creature is often described as a flying biped with hooves, but there are many variations. The common description is that of a bipedal kangaroo-like or wyvern-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wings, horns, small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, Hooves, and a forked or pointed tail. It has been reported to move quickly and is often described as emitting a high-pitched blood-curdling scream. Number 1. The Thunderbird the Thunderbird is a legendary creature in particular North American indigenous people's history and culture. It is considered a supernatural being of power and strength. It is especially important and frequently depicted in the art, songs, and oral histories of many Pacific Northwest coast cultures, but is also found in various forms among the peoples of the American Southwest, East Coast of the United States, Great Lakes, and Great Plains. In modern times, it has achieved notoriety as a purported Cryptid, similar to creatures such as Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. And come on, something called the Thunderbird can definitely take out the Kraken. Number 10, Thonis Heracleon and Alexandria. Long gone, similar to Atlantis, Alexandria is shrouded in myths and mysteries, but this one is genuine. It has also been located. For the price of one, you can get access to two historic underwater cities. While Thonis Heracleon rests a bit further off the coast, the remains of Alexandria are situated a few feet off the coast. Considering that the ruins are over 2,000 years old and full of different shipwrecks, fallen anchors, and even lost and found gold treasures, both are remarkably well preserved. Similar to Venice, canals formerly divided the buildings and temples of Thonis Heracleion.
play on, although it is still unknown how and why the city was drowned. The remains of Alexandria will hopefully soon be visible through the projected underwater archaeological museum of Alexandria, even if Thonis Heracleion is still only accessible by scuba divers. Number 9. San Roma de Sao Another community lost to flooding and another reservoir. In northeastern Spain in Catalonia, between Barcelona and the French border, this 1,000 year old town was completely buried during the 1960s. The people relocated, taking their possessions and the deceased with them, removing loved ones' remains from the grave. With the exception of the church spire, which towers over the water, the settlement remains underwater. At low tide, the entire church and the tops of adjacent buildings appear in an eerie spectacle spectacle that is only seen from the top of the spire. Number 8. Dwarka in 1988, it was discovered that the 32,000 year old underwater city of Dwarka, also known as the Gateway to Heaven, was submerged about 100 feet below the Gulf of Cambay. There were discovered ancient pillars, city grids, constructions, and artifacts. Some estimate their age at 10,000 years or more. Some speculate that they may be as old as 5,000 years. Still, others are certain that they originate from the Middle Ages. Others, however, assert that the Dwarka Temple was demolished during during an invasion on the city in 1473 by Mahmoud Begada, the Sultan of Gujarat. In any case, this is a real underwater city that has been lost for a very long time and is amazing, mysterious, and full of folklore. Number 7. Lago di Vagli at the base of this stunning lake in the Tuscan countryside is a medieval hamlet that embodies the legend of Brigadoon, the fabled Scottish village said to appear for just one day every 100 years. Due to a dam building, the settlement of Fabrice de Carigine, which dates back to the 12th century, has been underwater since 1953. But every now and again, the reservoir is drained for upkeep, and slowly, where there used to be a lake, a medieval village appears, almost as immaculate as it did centuries before. Number 6. The Lost Villages Building a dam to span the St. Lawrence River between Cornwall, Ontario and Messina, New York was necessary for the construction of the St. Lawrence Seaway and hydroelectric project in the 1950s. Nine villages would be inundated during the development, which was the issue. People who could move their homes away on trailers were given plenty of notice, and some famous and public structures were preserved through relocation. The nine villages became known as the Lost Villages of Ontario when the area was inundated. A Lost Villages Museum in Longsalt honors the settlements. Number 5. Yonaguni Jima The Atlantis of Japan is the Yonaguni Monument. Enigmatically and contentiously off the shore of the Ryukyu Islands are peculiarly shaped formations that some scientists think are exclusively human made and indicate the remains of an ancient civilization that sank some 10,000 years ago. There have purportedly been discoveries of a pyramid shaped building, an arch, staircases and other formations, all of which have what appear to be ancient scripts in inscriptions, suggesting the existence of a long-lost underwater society. Others claim that in contrast to the symmetrical basalt columns found in Iceland and on the giant causeway in Northern Ireland, the structures are naturally occurring. Number 4. Lion City in 1959, a valley was inundated to make way for a hydropower plant and dam, creating Jiandao Lake, also known as the Lake of a Thousand Islands. About 300,000 people were moved, and Shicheng, also known as Lion City, was flooded, was forgotten, that is, until 2001, when an expedition headed by the government peered beneath the surface and discovered an underwater city that was essentially a time capsule of Imperial China, complete with gorgeous, ornately adorned buildings from the 1300s that were still immaculate. Experienced divers are in for a unique experience hunting for Chinese Atlantis. Number 3. Port Royal on June 7, 1692, a strong earthquake and tsunami destroyed 2,000 lives and buried the Jamaican metropolis of Port Royal. Real life Caribbean pirates called Port Royal home, and the city's sinking was attributed to divine intervention. It was once dubbed the wickedest city on earth. However, the pirates continued to advance along the coast unabated. Nowadays, it is considered one of the world's best preserved underwater cities, with only a few artifacts taken out and shown at several Jamaican museums. The authorities must provide you specific clearance before you can scuba dive to the sunken metropolis. 
Number two, Tequina. Scientists exploring Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable body of water in the world that spans Bolivia and Peru, found a pre-Incan road, a 2,600 foot wall, a crop terrace, and a temple that was 660 feet long and 160 feet wide in 2000. The location, which is 90 miles northeast of La Paz, the capital of Bolivia, is believed to be a complex of temples that date back between 1,000 and 1,500 years. Nine years later, researchers found a a reef in the lake filled with ancient artifacts, such as gold and semi-precious stone pieces, adding to the riddles surrounding the submerged civilization that is still present in Lake Titicaca. Number 1. Baya Another once malevolent city sunk beneath the waves. This time, the bad people were not pirates, but rather hedonistic Romans who went to Baia, which is located on the Mediterranean coast about 18 miles outside of Naples, and is known as the Las Vegas of ancient Rome. The 2,000 year old ruins are in excellent shape, and numerous complete statues, as well as homes and temples, have been discovered. Less than 20 feet separates the majority of the submerged metropolis, with some sections even visible above the water. Water. You can use a snorkel to explore the archaeological park if you'd like. Thanks for watching. Those were 10 scary ancient cities that are now underwater. Leave a like and comment if you think we missed anything, and we hope you have a scary day.